Welcome to this Houdini notebook tutorial. This video is part of the Side Effects Labs notebook. And in this video, we're looking at the Labs volume loop node. So this is a sub level geometry node. So we can just go over here and drop a volume loop right over here, Labs volume loop. You will see that it has two inputs, but only one input is required. We are going to be using two inputs because that gives you the best result. I'll explain exactly how this works shortly, but we will be needing a volume for this. So the first input is going to be your base volume, and the second one is going to be a secondary volume to blend with. So we have two sequences of volumes coming in, and it blends between them. The way it works is that we give it a frame range. So you can see over here that the default is 1 to 240, but we'll change it to a different frame range. So let's just say 1 to 40, and then every 40 frames, it'll loop the volume. How it does that is by taking the first input, taking the second input, and then pushing the second input to halfway through the frame range, so halfway between 1 and 40, so frame 20, and then it blends from the first into the second sequence and then back into the first sequence. So the way that we're going to make use of this is by creating a simple pyro simulation. We can just use the bonfire, so pyro configure bonfire, and let's just place this over here. You'll see that it creates a whole bunch of things for us. We don't need most of it, so I'm going to delete everything over on the right hand side. That's all for embers, so we'll delete that. And then everything after the pyro look can be deleted as well. So we just have this over here. Now over here, I'm going to just let this play back for a couple of frames so that we can see what we have. As you can see over time, the flames develop and then they rise. There's a bit of mushrooming in the beginning and then they kind of develop into the bonfire look that we're interested in. So the first thing that we want to do over here is ensure that our simulation isn't looping from the start, right? Because we don't want this to be inside of the loop. We just want this section over here to be part of the loop. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to find the point in our simulation where it's more or less stabilized. So we're just going to save out a section of this to disk so we can use a file cache for that right over here, plug this in. And the only thing that I'm going to do is just remove some of the fields. So we're not going to need our CD. We're not going to need temperature. I'm just shrinking this down to cache to disk a bit faster and I'll use a 16 bit float. Cool, so that over there can be saved to disk. So give that a chance to save to disk, and then we can take a look at what we have after that. Okay, so save to disk. We just have this entire sequence over here from frame zero all the way to frame 240. Now, you won't necessarily need such a long sequence. This is just so that it's easy for me to work with over here. Now, firstly, we're going to take a base sequence. So we're going to plug this into the base volume. Now we're going to get an error and that's because the overlay sequence is set to second input. Over here, I'm just going to delete channels for the frame range and set this between one and 40. So we're going to have a loop that runs every 40 frames. And now we're going to need a second input for our sequence. So we put this in over here. Now it's going to sort of work, but this isn't the way that we want it set up. The way that we want to do this is by offsetting each of these animations. So what I'm going to do is drop a time shift over here so this time shift over here, we're just going to offset the frames. The reason we're going to do that is because we want to start not from frame one, but from the point where the simulation is already settled. So we can add some amount to our expression over here. Just click once over here and then say frame plus, and then just add some amount. So I believe 50 frames is going to do pretty well for us. At this point, the simulation is basically already stable. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp to the last frame. We can delete the channels over here and put in our own value for this 240. So what exactly do we want to do? Well, we want the sequence to be clipped off at whatever this frame is over here, plus the amount for the end of our sequence, right? So we can copy this parameter right over here. So copy parameter, and then over here, we'll just paste relative references. So you'll see now that it says 40, but let's just add the same amount to that expression over here. So plus 50. Now, if you don't quite understand what I've done over here, all I'm saying is that Let's push up our frames by 50 frames and let's push up the end point for our frames to the length of this frame range plus the amount that we're offsetting. So if there was no offset, right, and we're just using $f, then we wouldn't add an offset over here. Okay, cool. So now that we have the one set up, we just need to set up the other one. This one over on the side, it needs to be shifted a further amount. This one needs to be shifted by half of our frame range over here plus the amount that we've offset the original. So over on this one, we can just go over here and add another 20, right? So half of our sequence length, you'll see it now gives us 71. And the end frame is going to be the same thing. It's going to also be offset by a further 20. Now, why are we offsetting by 20 in each of these? 
Well, we're simply taking the length of this frame range over here and finding the midpoint of it, right? Halfway between one and 40, so we're taking 20. We're taking 20 frames, adding it to this, and now we have a blended loopable animation. So I'm just going to play this back in our viewport and save it as a flipbook, so we can say flipbook with new settings. The start can just be frame one, and then the end, we'll just do frame 40, right? So we start this over here, and it'll take a moment to calculate all of this because it has to load it from disk more than once because it has to do one for each time shift. So we'll give this a moment to load and then I'll show you what we have. And there we go. If we play it back, you'll see that we now have a looping animation of our fire. So every 40 frames, it does repeat and you can adjust this however you need. If you need a longer sequence, you can do that. Cool, so there we have it. And I'm just going to go over this again so that it makes more sense to you. Over here, we choose a frame range for the length of our loop. If we need a frame range that loops every 80 frames, we'll just change this to 80. And let's actually use that example, right? So we would change this to 80. Then for the first time shift that's coming in, we're just offsetting our animation to the point where the simulation has settled. So I'm adding 50 frames because it takes about 50 frames for our simulation to settle. Over on the end frame over here, I'm taking that same offset and adding it to the range that we have in our loop volume. So over here, we have 80. And over here, we have 80 plus 50, right? So 130. So that's all we're doing on the first time shift. On the second one over here, we're offsetting by half of the amount in this loop volume. So over here, we're going to have to change this to 40. So now we have $F plus our original offset from this one over here, plus an extra 40, because we need to find the midpoint of this frame range. And then down at the bottom over here, we'll change this to 40 as well, because we're doing the same thing where we take the range. So that's going to be 80 frames, adding the offset of 50, and then finding the midpoint of our frame range to add another 40, right? And just like that, our loop volume now works. You can play around with all of these different options over here. For example, if you want your blend mode to be additive or maximum, you can do that. You can also use a density effects crossfade curves. This will cause denser areas to fade in and out a little bit faster. And then we have options over here where we have our two ramps. And this is just going to be your base sequence crossfade. So that's going to be the first inputs crossfade. And then the overlay sequence crossfade over here, which is going to be how the second one fades in. And this is the fade amount, not their visibility. And generally you won't really make changes to this, but it's good to just be aware that this adjusts the way that each one fades into the other. We also have a way of previewing our motion vectors. And so you can see that it also does a sort of interpolation over our velocity fields. And that's all we really need to worry about. Do keep in mind that if we just change this overlay sequence to self, we won't need a second input anymore, but the loop won't look as good. There'll be two separate positions at which it loops and it's a lot more visible that it is looping. So second input is the way if you want a smoother blend and a smoother loop. I hope that this helped you understand this and I'll be seeing you soon with another video. Thanks for watching. Bye.